welcome to Life at the Met. A programme showcasing the talents and accomplishments of our students at Belfast Metropolitan College. I'm Stephen Greer. And I'm Coral Dixon. Coming up in today's show. We recognise the achievements of students on the supported learning programme at a very special graduation. Thinking about further education? Find out more at our Festival of Learning later this month. Science, technology, engineering and maths. Just what's so special about STEM courses? We have the answer. And showcasing excellence in plumbing and electrical skills. But first, Belfast Met prides itself in learning for all and recently we celebrated some of the hardest working students in the college through the supported learning graduation. And with us in the studio to tell us more about it is Alison Anderson. Alison, graduation is always a special time for any student. How does this one differ? Well, it's, a, it's an absolutely wonderful event. It's very energetic and very vibrant and our students are always very excited about it and it means a tremendous amount to them to be able to celebrate their achievements and to have them formally recognised. That may well for some of the students, not all of them, but for some of the students, that may well be the first time that that has ever happened to them. So it means such an awful lot to them and they prepare for it for quite a long time. And this year we had quite a few students speaking. It's, it's the highlight of their college career, I think. And certainly their parents are very proud of them, as I'm sure yours would be when it comes to your graduation, they're very proud of them. But also they get very emotional at seeing the achievements that their son or daughter has made in their time in college and their personal development and growth over that period of time as well. And Alison, I'm sure you have some inspirational stories of success and achievement from your students. Mm -hmm. We have lots, but I think there's one in particular this year that we highlighted, and it's a student, Amy Montgomery, who came to us at the age of 16 from, a spe from special education. And her um, ambition when she came to college was to be able to travel independently and to go out and meet her friends without having her parents take her there and her parents be there. So she uh, came on to an Entry 3 programme which was about building independence and self-confidence and self-esteem. She then moved on to a Level 1 programme and she's now in a Level 1 Training for Success programme where she has work placement. But she has achieved her ambition in that she now gets two trains from Carrick Fergus uh, into town and she is able to travel into Belfast in the evening to meet her friends independently without her parents having to take her there. And she told her story at the graduation and it was extremely powerful and uplifting. And Alison, last time you were here, you were talking to us about the Supported Learning Hub. How is that going for the students? It's brilliant. It's been a real um, wonderful addition uh, to us. It's, the students absolutely love it. Um, it's continually full of students. They come in and out of the hub um, all the time. But it has also created a, a tremendous, I think, vibrancy on the Millfield site and has allowed our students to be much more included right across the site. So in terms of us having inclusive learning in the college, it has really worked. It's been absolutely fantastic. And the Live and Learn Hub was the result of a, a brilliant partnership with our estates um, folk and also the marketing and communications people who marketed it for us as well. So things like that we couldn't do on our own, unfortunately. So we do work very hard in partnership with other people. You spoke about the inclusive learning um, that Belfast Met offers. Mm -hmm. Do you think people are surprised to hear about this? I think there still is an element of surprise that we do offer, I think, such a wide breadth of further education and training to people with severe and sometimes complex learning difficulties. I think sometimes it comes as a surprise to many parents as well that that, that provision is there and that it is a fully supported provision and that their young son or daughter will have support to come to college and more importantly very support much support in social aspects of college so I think it, there still is an element of surprise when we talk about what we do particularly the breadth of what we do and how many students we can offer provision to. So that sounds fantastic Alison thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much indeed you're very welcome. Now if you're thinking of joining us in September for a full-time or part-time course here's some timely advice on where to start. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jim Woods, Head of Learner Success at Belfast Metropolitan College. I'd like to talk to you today about our application system for the September 2017-18 year. 
The applications kicked off on the 20th of January with an open day that we've had where we had all of the staff available to talk to parents and students alike. Applications are a critical part of getting into the college. You need to meet the criteria for the course which is available on our website or in our hard copy prospectus which is available in any campus. After that we will revert back to the date of application. So really keen that you apply as early as possible to afford you the maximum choices so that you can make your decision for future employment and study. That was Jim Woods talking us through the admissions process. But how about joining us later this month for a taster session? It's part of the Festival of Learning on the 23rd of March. Joining us now is Eileen DeLarge. Eileen, the Festival of Learning sounds really interesting. Can you tell us a wee bit more about that? Absolutely. The Festival of Learning uh, that Belfast Met is actually holding the event on the 23rd of March. It ties into the wider Belfast, uh, Belfast Festival of Learning. And what we're doing at the uh, Titanic Quarter on the 23rd of March, from 9 o'clock until 4, we will have what they call a taster event, where communities and school children are encouraged to come down to the Titanic Quarter and have a go really at trying out a new skill, learning a new skill. Uh, some of the skills we, for instance, clothing alterations, for instance, or trying out a musical instrument. So it's really to encourage um, those who normally wouldn't think of coming to the local college to find out what's on offer and what's going on, to call in to us to see the site, talk to the staff and have a go at something new. And speaking of learning, how can I find out what courses are on offer at Belfast Met? To find out about the courses, you can go on to the website. Uh, belfastmed.ac.uk go onto the website, check out our publications, hard copy publication. We have various links with the employers, communities, business organisations. They also have lists for courses. Check out the social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And then of course if you're not sure uh, you can also contact us on 028 260265 265 option 2 and that will take you through to the course inquiry line and you can find out more there as well. And if the course you've chosen has entry requirements, how would you find them out? Go onto the website or use the hard copy publication. Each page on the college prospectus has a dedicated page per course. And under each one, you have the entry requirements. So you have the minimum entry requirements. And in some cases, you would have enhanced entry requirements. So that could be, for instance, in the case of one of the art courses, you may have to have a GCSE, Grade C in art. So the entry requirements are there published in advance and then that allows the applicant to self-assess really if they're in target to, to make the course. And what happens once you've applied to the college? Once you apply to the college that kickstarts a whole process so it's really important first of all once the applicant applies they can apply for up to five courses. Once you apply you receive the acknowledgement and then shortly afterwards you will receive an invitation to pre-entry advice and guidance. Now pre-entry advice and guidance attendance is mandatory so once the applicant gets the invitation, if they can't attend, they must let us know in advance. Communication is the key, uh, so an alternative date can be uh, provided. Once the peg is passed, for those who apply up to the end of May, once the peg is passed, then uh, there are a number of potential outcomes. So then the process of allocating offers and places, etc., would, would kick in, and then some applicants go onto waiting lists. Um, Keeping details up to date is really, really important because we will provide regular status updates to the applicant. For those in receipt of an offer, they will have been provided with a date and time to come in in August. So the main period of activity once the end of June passes is A-level results 17th of August. From that date then applicants will be asked to come in to convert hopefully to enrolment and then um, hopefully get onto the first course of choice. But communication is the key and keeping contact details up to date. You spoke there about A-level results and a lot of people don't get the results until August. Should they wait until then to apply? Apply now. Apply immediately. Do not wait until you get the results. Um, a lot of our applicants are waiting on results and what happens is that once they apply to your course they will be asked to provide um, pending results, achieved results but really the main period of activity is from August time so the main thing now, apply early and then offers can be conditional offers given on condition of meeting the entry criteria and obviously that won't happen until A level and GCSE results are released so the message is apply now, do not wait. And what is the pre-entry advice session? Pre-entry advice and guidance is a critical part of the applicant process. Um, it's a unique um, 
aspect of the process. The reason for it is that applicants applying to the college, yes, they apply to the college, but the pre-entry, once they come onto the college, they can see the college, they can see the campus, they can speak to the staff, they can speak to some of the teachers involved in the course. They can find out more information about the course and most importantly, the applicant can self-assess if they've actually applied to the correct course. So for instance, mistakenly, someone may apply for a higher le level course, but they're only sitting GCSEs. So as a result, then the pre-entry advice and guidance, they can uh, use that facility to transfer to another more suitable level and then also retain the original stage date applied, which is going back to the message, apply as early as possible. And how will you know if you have been accepted on the course? Whenever applicants attend the pre-entry advice and guidance, there are a number of outcomes of the pre-entry advice and guidance, one of which will be an offer or a place. That's the terms that we use in the college. When an applicant is provided with an offer, they will be provided with an appointment at day and time to come into the college in August to show their examination results once they receive them and hopefully they will meet the requirements and convert to enrolment. For someone who already meets the requirements and it falls into that category, the number of places, they will be asked to convert before the end of June, before the end of uh, June to convert to enrolment. So those who go onto a waiting list are slightly different. We will keep in contact with them. We may move them from the waiting list to offer on a place of a course and then in that case we will actually contact them by email, by letter, phone, etc. And for those who don't meet entry requirements, is there any advice for those people? Don't panic. <laughs> Keep in contact with us. Applicants are asked to provide us with their uh, qualifications via the e-results facility. The advice is go on, update the results as requested. If they've already been provided with an appointment, come into the college, keep that appointment. It's really, really important to talk to us, to talk through their options. If they don't meet the requirements for that course, we have a wide choice of courses available in the college. We can talk to the uh, range to talk to them to the careers team, etc. Uh, so it's really important to keep in contact and don't panic. And is there any final advice you would give to anyone thinking of applying to Belfast Net? Uh, check out the website. Come down, speak to us, visit us. Uh, don't hesitate. Don't uh, think that going on to a course at Belfast Met is not for you. And most of all, apply early. Thank you, Eileen. That was really informative. Thank you. And if that's encouraged you to do a course at Belfast Met, then don't forget the Festival of Learning. It's Thursday, the 23rd of March, from 9 until 4 p.m. at our Titanic Porter campus. We'll remind you again about it at the end of the programme and of course there will be lots of details about it on our website belfastmet.ac.uk. Well of course one of these subject areas which has had a lot of profile in recent years is STEM subjects. STEM means science, technology, engineering and maths. And particularly trying to encourage more women into STEM subject areas. So appropriately we are joined by two women, Fiona Densey and Maura Watson who both work in STEM areas. Fiona, Maura, welcome to the programme. We say science, technology, engineering and maths, but what does that really mean, Fiona? Science, technology, engineering and maths are sectors of our economy and they're sectors that we've identified where there's an undersupply um, of the workforce. So the idea is that we are encouraging students to into the STEM sector so that we can meet the demands of the workforce. Now, subjects that are traditionally uh, classified as STEM would be IT, engineering, manufacturing and sciences. Mar, why is there such a focus on this area? There's a huge focus because basically we have a huge um, shortfall of well, well qualified, educated um, scientists, engineers, the whole lot right across the board. It's estimated it's around in the UK it costs about 1.3 billion a year because we don't have the staff out there. So we need people to get educated, to get out there and be ready to join the workforce. And Fiona, the college recently held a Women into STEM event. Can you tell us a wee bit more about that? For the third year in a row, Belfast Met have hosted a Women into STEM event. Um, we typically invite up to 200 pupils and we focus on females, bring them down to the college and we invite ambassadors for STEM in this area to, to inspire them basically to take up these subjects. Um, as part of that day, there we have arranged a number of workshops um, where they attend in the sectors that we can deliver within the college in IT, in engineering, uh, in construction, in manufacturing. So the students come down and experience what that industry is all about and have the opportunity to ask questions. Most recently, we had the pleasure of Dame Jocelyn Burnell um, to the college. Um, she's a Northern Ireland scientist um, who 
is of a physics, astrophysics background, um, and she gave a very inspiring talk to the young pupils who visited the college. And Mara, you were also part of the event. I was indeed. We were looking at computing and we had a number of different workshops going on. So we had some virtual reality, which was really exciting. Um, and some of the students got a chance to try on a new um, virtual reality headset. Uh, we also had uh, Internet of Things workshops, which was involved with using Raspberry Pis to switch off devices in your home, which is going to be a really big growth area in the future. And um, we also did mobile app development, and that was a lot of fun. At the end of the workshop, the girls were able to go away and they had developed a mobile app for their Android phone and they could upload it if they want to their phone and use it as soon as they left the workshop. So it was really good fun and we really enjoyed running those workshops. And Mara, is it challenging for women to break into STEM related industries? It can be seen to be. In theory, no, absolutely not. Girls do so much better in GCSE and A level, but for some odd reason, they just don't choose the subjects. And in particular in computing, we've had something like a 70% drop in computing of girls who actually want to go on and study that area. I think a lot of it is there aren't enough role models out there and that's why this kind of event that we had is really important that we bring scientists in, female scientists, and give girls the opportunity to see actually they're quite normal and this looks like a lot of fun. Um, I think one of the problems with girls traditionally is they tend to think that they want to go into something that's going to make the world a better place and sometimes they don't see that. They look at the channel, they sort of think of gaming and think that's it, it's just, it's just about messing about with games. They don't actually realise that things like virtual reality could be used for helping a surgeon in one part of the world actually help a surgeon in another part of the world carry out that operation. There's lots of different applications for the kind of things we do, but I think it is just we need to widen that perspective a little bit for them. Amara, what kind of jobs can women in STEM aspire to? There's just such a wide range. I mean, you're talking about at the sciencey end, you have got traditional people in lab coats working away in a lab somewhere, creating maybe materials, maybe working on medical things. Then you've got people going right away up to engineering. You're actually creating maybe a, something that's useful, a product. Um, you, again, technology comes a big part of my area. We're looking at the computing side, the IT side, and what you can actually do it. You have a lot of data. How are you going to manage that data? Right away up to then to obviously the mile size. You could be analysing huge amounts of data. That's another big area in my particular areas is big data. Um, how you actually analyse this huge amount of data that's coming in, um, and that's going to be a growth area as well. So it's just huge, and you could be, as say, working from the lab right up to being a project manager in a business in a suit. You know, the, the, the world's your oyster. And Fiona, what are your thoughts? Well, I think a very important document that's out there that's important for young people, for parents, for careers teachers, is the Northern Ireland Skills Barometer. And it's a signposting document to the industries where there is a huge undersupply. And levels four, five, and six, there's a huge undersupply in, in STEM subjects. So I'd encourage people, you know, to look at this document in mind knowing that these are growth areas for our economy. At the moment, we're looking at basically there's one in 10 managers in STEM areas are females. We're obviously looking to increase that. While we've got more and I here today, um, we're obviously an exception rather than the norm, and that's, that's the reality. Um, at present in the college, um, within our departments, only a third of our enrolments would be female. So, we're trying to push people into STEM, but really we're only drawn on two thirds of our population. And the idea is to create a more balanced workforce. Well, Fiona, Maura, that's been really fascinating. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Hugh. Well, there's big excitement for some of our students this month as Belfast Met hosted the Plumbing and Electrical Student Competition for the first time in Northern Ireland. The event was held at our Millfield campus with great prizes up for grabs. Let's hear from some of the students from Belfast Met who were there at the competition. I mean, like working under pressure, definitely, and within a time frame as well. Um, it teaches you sort of to, to plan your job and know what you're doing, think ahead. Well, I'd say it's a good way to learn how your peers are getting on with yourself and how you compare with them, and also see how they progress and what different skills they pick up as well. I think we're giving a lot of experience with uh, pen people are going to give a lot of help when they're on site and if their employers will show a lot of respect to them. Working with employers is essential. It is absolutely essential to these programmes. Um, these young people, particularly in the trades, are, are, are going into a trade where we can do the theory in the college. 
we can do practical in the college, which you've seen our workshops, and we fit them out really well. But when they go out to do real life work with the employers in customers' homes or premises or businesses, you know, they're getting real life experience. Now, having the employers coming into the college during the competitions means that we're building our links with employers. I suppose the event helps students in a variety of ways. It builds confidence in the students, so uh, they have a chance to showcase their skills and abilities, um, which is really important, especially as a learner. They can see the achievement that, that they've made and, and hopefully go on and uh, have a fantastic career. It was a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> I've heard of stuff that like I've done before. Got a lot more pressurised. Yeah, I think it went well. Um, I enjoyed it. I learned, learned from it. Joining us now is Ian Thompson and Mark McComb, both lecturers in plumbing and electrical. So Mark, it was the first time this competition was held in Northern Ireland. How important is this for your students? Well, it's really important. It's a great um, opportunity that this plumbing and electrical competition has been held here. It gives the students a chance to show their ability um, in the plumbing and the electrical. It also helps to show their ability to the employers that, em that employ them and it builds the confidence in that doing their jobs. And could you tell us a bit more about the apprenticeships that you offer at Belfast Met? Apprenticeships in Belfast Met, we offer two strands, uh, TFS, Training for Success, and we also um, offer Apprentice Northern Ireland. TFS is for um, students of uh, the age 16 and 17 who um, the college um, pay £40 a week uh, along with expenses. Now what we're looking for is uh, for TFS students is to come in with um, grades anywhere between A to D in their GCSEs or a level 2 in essential skills or a level 1, a level 2 C and a level 1 is D. Apprentice Northern Ireland is uh, we're looking for students to come in with um, um, at least a C in their GCSEs. The difference is that uh, Apprenticeship Northern Ireland is that these students will be employed from day one and um, the company they work for will pay them a wage where the TFS, the, the, the students are paid £40 a week. And Ian, you've been in the electrical industry for some time. Is it still a good trade to learn? It is, yes. Uh, I feel I've been in it for a very long time because my father run an electrical company. But uh, yes, it is a good time to join the electrical uh, installation side of things because uh, the building is still in a boom at the minute. Plus, there's a lot of maintenance going on and refurbishment. And in fact, we actually have some of our own students who are employed by a company uh, replacing the light fittings, even in our own college at nights, replacing them with more efficient lights. Um, so what do you look for in a good apprentice? Well. You're looking for the 16 points in the GCSE, maths and English as well, but uh, uniquely compared to the plumbing, we would also be looking for a colour blindness check, because obviously with uh, electrical cable, that's one way that we identify the uh, types of cables by colour. So apart from uh, the, that, the plumbing and electrical are almost the same on entry requirements. And Mark, do many girls take part in these industries? Throughout the, the last few years, um, we have had um, four girls that have come into the plumbing and they have done their level two and their level three in setting gills. Now at the present moment, we have one um, girl, she's a, a first year. And this girl has come in, she has um, a lot of GCSEs, she has her A-levels. She also went to Queen's to do a, do a degree and she's now in studying to be a plumber. She has, um, done the first year in plumbing and she's doing quite well. And Ian, is it hard to encourage girls into an electrical industry? Well, the females definitely are in the minority. However, we have had a few uh, females come on board as well. We had one of the students actually complete the MVQ and uh, come out of her time last year. And there's some small benefits to having females in the industry because if you think about it, if the uh, lights need to be changed or hand dryers need to be checked in females' toilets, uh, she works sometimes in a shopping centre, she's able to avail of that, so, whereas we would have restricted access. And are there different types of electrical training? Yes, there is. There's the electrical installation and then there's the maintenance. And uh, at the college we cover the full range, even things like poor appliance testing, uh, electrical uh, inspection and testing as well for even mature uh, students that are qualified electricians that need to upskill. 
and in fact we run through right through from the pre-apprenticeship right through to the uh, apprenticeships, the HNC and then even a foundation degree in the electrical. Well Mark and Ian, thanks for joining us. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Well that's it for this edition of Life at the Met. A big thank you to all of our guests and of course to you at home. And don't forget about the Festival of Learning later on this month. You can have a go at this taster style event and perhaps think about learning a new skill such as music technology. How about learning a new instrument? Learn how to do basic hairdos and beauty looks. How to do clothing alterations. Or learn how to rewire a plug and change a tyre. There'll be more on our website belfastmet.ac.uk or check our social media for updates. But from Stephen and me, bye bye. bye.